Hey everyone, Piano Man Chuck here. Now I have with me today two keyboards, the Casio Privia PX5S and the Kawai VPC1. They're very different from each other. Uh, basically the Privia PX5S is kind of a jack of all trades. You get a lot of bang for your buck with this for under a thousand dollars street price, 999 US. You get basically a master controller, a synthesizer, a stage piano, and it does everything pretty well. With the Kawai VPC-1, which is about twice that price, you get just a piano controller. It doesn't do anything more than be the interface between your fingers and whatever sound source you have. Usually that's a virtual piano. And both of them play piano. It's great, but there is no question that the Kawai VPC-1 is probably the finest controller in the world and I actually play a Kawai baby grand piano in the lobby of a major medical center every week and it's not the concert series but this VPC-1 blows the action on that acoustic piano away that's how good it is but we're not here to compare which one is the better keyboard it's already a given that the Kawai is we're not here to compare sounds or anything like that. The reason both of these keyboards are paired up today is because both of these keyboards have what's called triple sensor technology. And the majority of keyboards in the world today use dual sensor. These two use triple sensor. And it's not limited to just these two. Um, I believe the Casio PX series offers what they call tri-sensor. And as far as Kawai, the MP series, the CA series, the CN series, the CP series, and the ES7 all offer tri-sensor. I think Yamaha has a couple of models too, but basically it's rare. And you can pretty much do more control with a triple sensor keyboard than you could do with the standard two sensor. And if you view my previous video, which explains dual and triple sensor, you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about. But basically, let me just recap. Dual sensor, when you hit a key, it goes through two sensors. And the faster or harder you hit it, the louder it sounds. And these sensors pick up the time it takes to get from sensor one to sensor two, so it knows how hard you've hit it. And if you're playing something soft, you're hitting that key much slower. So the time it takes to get from sensor one to two is slower. So hard and slow. Notice the difference in the volume. Now you add a third sensor, which is going to be this sensor in the middle. And Let's go back to two sensors. If I'm going to play a note repeatedly, I have to bring that note back up above sensor one before I can make that note sound again. So basically that's pretty much all the way in the upright position for that key, or at least past the first part of that first sensor before I can hit it again. And the deal with the three sensor technology is I, if I'm hitting a note, I only need to bring it back past that second sensor before I can play it again. So, with that in mind, each one of these having triple sensor technology, let's start comparing the physical aspects of triple sensor. Let, let's start out with, um, let me get a tape measure here. just want to make sure that everything is going to be here um, pretty much identical or similar. Now the key height on this one is about three quarters of an inch. Same thing with the VPC-1. And when I play a key, I'm down near about a quarter of an inch. Same thing on the VPC-1. So there's about a half an inch of travel on both of these keyboards. Now, the theory is Actually, the fact is, I should be able to play something fast without lifting it up all the way. And I'm finding that I'm doing this right now, but 
most of the time the note's not sounding. Now I'm not bringing it up too far up. And you can hear the clicks. Let me go closer to the mic. You're hearing a lot more clicks than you are keys. That's every time that I'm pressing the key. And if I go to the Kawhi, it's sounding pretty much every single time. Not so much with the uh, PX5. So obviously on the Kawhi, that second sensor, or that third one, the middle one, is placed lower. And I believe I recall reading somewhere that I can do this 14 times a second. And I don't think I can do that with this because it appears that that middle sensor is up higher. So it takes more time to get up past that sensor and then back down. I am, well, let's, let's try something here. It looks just off the top of my head that I need to bring that key up at least about an eighth of an inch below its resting point before I can make that key sound again. I'm well below half an inch on this, so <laughs> not much at all. I don't need to bring it anywhere near the resting point on it. Now the other part to triple sensor technology is not just how fast you can repeat a key, without having to bring it up all the way. But the other thing with that is how slow I release a note. And as I release that note here, I'm lifting that key up slow. It seems that when the point happens where I go past that last sensor, the note suddenly drops out. But if I do the same thing on the Kawhi, the note drops out gradually, just like it would on an acoustic piano. All right, so we've got those differences as well. And there's another difference, and that's in legato playing. I can... Something like this. I'm not lifting the keys up all the way, so they're basically sustaining as I play them. I can hear more of a sustain here. Less of a sustain here because that note is being let go of. And, uh, you know... So, it turns out that the Kawhi seems to have a lower second or middle sensor and the Privia has a higher sensor, or the placement. So, the placement seems to be important and I would choose the placement over the Kawhi or on the Kawhi over the Casio for that reason. not quite as smooth. I have to lift my fingers up all the way, which means it takes more time. I can do it a lot faster here because I don't have to lift my fingers up all the way. So there's not that much difference to me, it seems, with the Casio and a two sensor keyboard, maybe just a slight bit. So, But either way, you can still get more expressive with this Casio than you can with another two sensor keyboard. Now let's go to something else and I'm going to turn down the uh, sounds for the piano that each one of these um, makes. Bear with me here a second. Okay now with the sound down so that whatever I play you're not going to hear anything. We just want to listen to the keys here. This one is a lot noisier than this one. This is very quiet for a keyboard. 
Now, if you take a regular piano and you can shut off the strings, you're going to hear the action being played as you're playing the keys. So, And the last thing I wanted to do was, when I hit a note here, you can hear when that key comes back up, it kind of bounces. And you can hear each bounce. This kind of does the same thing, but you only hear it come from down to up. You don't hear any of the bounce at all. You definitely hear that on this one. So when it comes to triple sensor, tri sensor, three sensor, whatever you want to call it, it all means the same thing. It seems that the Kawai has a much better implementation of it than the Casio series, the PX series does. So the triple sensor technology is not identical in these. The implementation seems to be just as critical as the implementation in one two sensor piano to the next. So, Piano Man Chuck, peace out. Thanks for watching.